Hello there. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, reading from the King James, authorized version, as J. Vernon would say. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. So he's in the Jesus and his mommy and daddy and families, peoples, land of Israel, occupied by the Romans, oppressed, more, more correct, people from the east, uh, modern-day Pakistan, perhaps, India, Nepal, wherever it was from, it was from the east. And they knew God was visiting man. And they came to see what was happening. To see the Savior of the earth, of mankind, that would choose him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for that it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, art not the least amongst the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people is Rye hell. It's kind of beautiful how God has set everything in place in an orderly fashion and gave little hints throughout the Old Testament of the coming Messiah, of the age to come, of redemption, repentance, faith, the creation. And out of Bethlehem, Bethlehem of Judea, the Savior. Pretty wonderful. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he said unto them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go. Search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. People of the world have no problem lying. They're good liars. Doesn't belong in Christianity, because there will be no liars in heaven. If you're a Christian and you're a liar, you better pull it in tight. Pull that tongue way back in your head and keep it quiet, because there will be no liars in heaven, my friend. Herod had no intention of worshiping him. And when they had heard and listened to the king's commandment, they departed. And lo, the star they had saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's a nice combination, a threesome, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they all have their own little pictures. Let's just face it. Their parents were given a lot of wealth right there that they could live on for a very long time in honor of the Son of God to come to the earth in the form of a little baby. And being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, 
and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Seems like kind of a strange land to have the Savior living, right? Egypt is pretty much a, a backwards and reprobate nation. Third world at best, with some technology, some areas of the nation um, advanced, but spiritually depraved. They worship the, the demon god Islamabub. And their whole nature, because of that, is depraved. And we look back during to the time of Jesus, the Messiah, they were really not a world power anymore. They were simply oppressed by the Romans, as Israel was. So Joseph and Mary and Jesus made the trek to Egypt. Kind of out of sight, out of mind, out, of, out from under the hands of the, the core group of the Romans. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. To say the least, that was brutal. And the soldiers that carried out the dirty deed, what can you say? Do you hold them accountable? You know, like the Nazi soldiers that simply carried out the orders of, of the Fuhrer, of the commanders. Unknown, I don't have answers for that. I only know that's a hard place to be. When you're a soldier or a policeman and you have to carry out duties that you certainly don't approve of, but you, have to, you, you follow orders. And that's what these soldiers did. And killed all the male children two years old and under. Of the Hebrews... Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they were not. Well, obviously, if your soldier showed up to your door and killed all your male children under two years old, that's, that's pretty brutal, just you know, in the middle of the night at a whim. That's brutal. But like I said, you don't get away with anything with God. One day, Herod's going to spend eternity in the lake of fire and outer darkness forevermore. And right now, he's just burning in hell. That's, a, that's his waiting place. Nice place to wait for the wicked man, hell. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. Take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came back to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, and the room and place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding. Being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So you have the geographical place, Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, and then you have the Nazarenes who grew their hair long and, and didn't drink wine and alcohol, and they abstained from other various things, the vow of the Nazarite. Uh, just interesting. I can't tell you all the ins and outs because the Bible doesn't declare every little jot and tittle. Just it simply gives you the base facts, and that's really what's important, you know. Kind of like you have um, people in your neighborhood. You go off to work, and uh, little sissy boys come and harass your wife when you when you go to work. It's hard to explain out to the authorities because they're nowhere around. But low weasels, they know how to squeal like a little, a little girl getting pinched. They're a, the abusive type that harass women when the authority and the men are not around. They're as in the story of the uh, 
Last Battle, The Chronicles of Narnia, a little monkey called Shift. That's what Herod was. That's what Herod's next in command was also. And that was the Herod that made friends with Pilate on the day they decided to crucify our Lord. It's funny, in the world, the world makes friends when the righteous man is persecuted. That's how the world makes friends. Getting drunk together, ripping somebody off, doing a dirty deal. But God used this little situation here as he tried to get away from the little weasel Herod. God used that to direct them to the place he wanted them to be, Nazareth. See, God works in mysterious ways. And as you are called to account, and you kind of are kind of rocking with the boat and kind of guiding the ship through the waters, and there's little things on the shore that you're not happy with and over on this shore. And you're kind of steering the boat through the waters of life, the narrow road of obedience in Jesus Christ. And sometimes you got to make a whip out of cords and drive the hypocrites and the wicked out of your home, out of your, off your property, out of your Bible study group, sometimes out of your family for a while till there's repentance. And sometimes you got to know where to steal for, steer for comfort, guide the boat over to the resting place for spiritual refreshment. And sometimes you're just in a hold mode where you're just working and learning and studying the Word of God and praying because you're out of season, but you're, you're building up your spiritual skills. God has all that in play. You can't be doing all things at all times. Sometimes he has you stand down, and sometimes he has you stand up and move out. And wherever you're at, stay true to the Lord, and most certainly, he will stay true to you. God bless you, friends. We'll see you next time.